Now we're going to talk about some elementary relations among probabilities. Uh, so we will have uh, an event, either or another event happening, uh, and uh, another case, an event, and another event happening. So we will consider the probabilities of these two scenarios. So, so first we will look at either or. Uh, case and which will also lead to for a special case of either or uh, normalization now suppose that we are performing experiments on a system a so experiments are being performed on system a and these experiments can lead to uh, several outcomes. There are a total number of alpha possible outcomes. And remember each outcome of the experiment we call an event. So outcomes or events. And uh, I'm going to index each outcome with R. So R is uh, event index and R can take a value 1, 2, 3 all the way up to alpha. So each event is labeled as event 1, event 2, event 3 all the way up to alpha. And I call NR, this funny N, sub R is the number of systems uh, when I form the statistical ensemble these will be the number of systems in the ensemble that will exhibit this particular outcome R so these will be exhibiting outcome R Okay, so if I look at the number of systems in the ensemble that ex exhibit outcome 1 and I add to it the number of systems in the ensemble that exhibit outcome 2 and outcome 3 and all the way up, up to uh, the last possible outcome alpha. What am I going to get here? This is a summation over the event index R from 1 to alpha nu and R. And this will basically give me, since I'm exhausting all the possibilities, these are the uh, possible alpha possible outcomes. Uh, I will be getting the total number of uh, systems in the statistical ensemble. So uh, n is going to be total number of systems in the ensemble. Now if I take this equation and divide it by n, so I will get uh, number of outcome number of systems that exhibit outcome 1 divided by n plus number of systems exhibiting outcome 2 divided by n number of systems exhibiting outcome 3 divided by total number of systems all the way up to uh, the number of systems exhibiting outcome alpha divided by total number of systems I will get here 1 so n divided by n. Now remember that the probability of outcome R was by definition uh, equal to the relative frequency of this outcome. So it's the number of systems exhibiting outcome R divided by the number of systems in the ensemble and this is as the number of systems gets very large so this was the definition of uh, probability so that's the definition of probability of outcome r
that means it's the relative frequency of the event R, the event R in the ensemble made of n systems. So basically, uh, this equation will become probability of outcome 1 plus probability of outcome 2 plus probability of outcome 3 plus probability of outcome alpha, which means I'm adding up the probabilities of all possible outcomes from 1 to alpha, I will be getting 1 at the end. So all the probabilities should add up to 1. This is something I briefly mentioned before. It's a very important result. It's called normalization condition. Normalization condition basically stated in words the probabilities of all possible outcomes of an experiment should add up to one now if i change this to saying uh, i would like to know what is the probability of occurrence of either event r or event s so what will be the answer to this one so the probability of occurrence of either event R or event S. What is this probability? Well, then I would look at the outcomes in my uh, experiment in the ensemble. I would count the number of cases where I see event R. So this is what I'm looking for, probability of event R or event S. Then this will be I, uh, the number of cases where I observe the outcome R plus the number of cases where I observe S. Then I will be seeing either R or S and divide this by the total number of systems in the ensemble. So that is to say probability of R or S is equal to probability of R plus probability of S as the number of systems in the ensemble goes to infinity. So either R or S has a probability, probability of R plus probability of S. Okay, so let's look at an example, a concrete example. Uh, tossing a die. Uh, as you know, when you toss a die, you can get as an outcome 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6 possibilities. The question is, what is the probability of having either 1 or 2? And what is the probability of having either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6? Okay, so the, the first question I would like to answer is, uh, for this one, uh, what is the probability of any event R uh, where R can take a value from 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 6? So alpha would be 6 here. So these are all the possible outcomes. Now, uh, since I don't have any preference of one side over the other okay so uh, all sides must be equally uh, equally likely why because uh, no preference of one side of the die over the others. So there is no preference. Therefore, I can argue that if you were to make an ensemble of uh, dice, uh, you toss them and you would find that in the, in the experiment that you perform in your statistical ensemble, one sixth of them would give you the outcome R. So probability of outcome R should be 1 over 6 for all R values 
for r is equal to 1, 2, 3, uh, to 6, it's by virtue of symmetry. It's a symmetry argument. There is no preference of one side over the others. Then to answer this question, what is the probability of having either 1 or 2 as the outcome? So probability of 1 or 2 would be probability of getting a 1 plus probability of getting a 2 uh, as the answer. So this would be 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6. You would get 1 over 3 as probability of either 1 or 2 is the outcome of this experiment. Now if I do this uh, for all possible outcomes, what is the probability of having either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6? So that is probability of outcome 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. Well, that means I'm counting all the possible probabilities. It's probability 1, probability 2, all the way up to probability 6. And this would be for each of them, there is no preference. They all have probability 1 over 6. And I do this 6 times, so I will get 1. So my answer will be 1 for this. And this is exactly what normalization condition means. So when I add up all the possible probabilities, I'm, get, I'm reaching the normalization condition. Probability of having either 1 or 2 or all the way up to 6, all possible outcomes must be 1. Okay, so that's going to be uh, a concrete example for this case. Okay, so just to recap, we're talking about elementary relations among probabilities and the first thing we're looking at is what is the probability of having an event either or another event. If we're performing experiments on a system A, there are a total of alpha possible outcomes. Each outcome is called an event in the language of statistics. And I use R event index so that R can take values from 1, 2, 3, all the way up to alpha. That means I have event 1, event 2, event 3, all the way up to event alpha. Then when I form a statistical ensemble of uh, systems A, I will find that R of those systems will exhibit the outcome uh, and R of those systems in the ensemble will exhibit the outcome R. So if I look at the number of subsystems uh, in the ensemble that exhibit outcome 1 plus the number exhibiting outcome 2 all the way up to alpha, they should add up to, because I have exhausted all the possibilities, the total number of systems in the ensemble N. So if I take this equation, uh, this equation, and I divide it by the total number of systems in the ensemble, then I will get 1. So that is to say probability of outcome 1 plus probability of outcome 2 plus probability dot 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 of uh, outcome alpha add up all the probabilities of all possible outcomes you should be getting 1 where the probability of any outcome R is defined as number of subsystems in the ensemble that exhibit outcome R divided by total number of systems in the ensemble as the number of systems gets very large. Now, if I ask what is the probability of occurrence of either event R or event S, then probability of R or S, I look at the statistical experiment that I do, I, I find the number of systems that exhibit outcome R, add them with the number of systems that exhibit outcome S, divided by total number of systems in the ensemble, I get the addition of the two probabilities. So for either or case, uh, we need to add up the probabilities. Now, a, for a concrete example, what is the probability of having either one or two when you toss a die? And what is the probability of having 
all possible outcomes. Well, when you toss a die, you can get one, two, three, four, five, six as the answer. And since you have no preference of one side over the others, all sides are equally likely. There are no uh, forces acting on these sides that makes it land on one side uh, most of the time. So uh, by virtue of the symmetry in this problem, we can say all sides have equal probability 1 over 6. So probability of having either 1 or 2 as the outcome of the experiment of tossing one die is probability of 1 plus probability of 2, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, 1 over 3. Part B is saying basically uh, what is the probability of having either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 all possible outcomes it is 1 because that's the normalization condition and I can check that by adding up the probabilities probability of outcome 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to 6 it is 1 over 6 times 6 and it is indeed 1